thanks for staying with us. So Nigeria is integrated more than ever across religious lines and ethnicity. Aside the foregoing, killings, kidnappings, ill governance, corruption, rituals, cultism, all have forfeited all our, uh, the progress we've made in the past years. Now our guest today, Reverend Tola Kasali, will use the essence and lessons of Easter celebration as a way to promote peace, unity, love amongst Nigerians. You can join the conversation on 081-270-53687, 091-390-76948. You can tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweets. Welcome, sir. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Sli slip of tongue, Yomika Sali. Oh, sorry. I do, oh, I do apologize. <laughs> no problem. So, um, so <clears throat> sir, I mean... As much as I want us to celebrate and be excited about this year's Easter, yes. but there's so much happening in the land, cultism, kidnapping, killing, insecurity. We see Reverend Kuka mentioned the other day, just on, over the over Sunday, that the country obviously is in a state of emergency. What message can we have of Easter today that can actually help to alleviate this pressure Nigerians are feeling right now? I, I think um, the most important message of Easter is peace. Because again, it has to do with someone giving his own life for humanity mm. on the cross. And the cross, it wasn't like this. It was two outstretched hands pulling people together, mm. the Jews and the Gentiles, mm. the Fulanis and the Yorubas, the Igbos and the mm. Shekiris. Can we come together? Mm. That's what Easter is all about, peace. That's what Jesus epitomized in scriptures. That's what he preached mm. on the scripture. Even on the cross, he mentioned something, he said, Forgive them. Mm. Easter is about forgiveness. Mm. Not, not while he left the cross, while he was on the cross, while he was in pain. He said, forgive them. Those that put me here, let's preach forgiveness, let's preach tolerance, let's preach peace, let's preach um, inclusion, let's pull people close, and let's build one nation. Because mm. again, it's about one body, but bringing many into one. Mm. Different people, the adversity should be our strength, mm. should never, never be a problem. Right. So I think the message for Easter should be peace. So the, the, for me, growing up, the essence of this season is always about the sacrifice. I remember yes. sending my messages to Prof, yes. and I would write, you know, the essence is sacrifice and thank him for the kind yes. of sacrifice. I have a father that is a deacon. And I would notice that this season now, people find it difficult to sacrifice. We would expect people of Bishop Kuka's standing to preach that sacrifice, letting go yeah. of your pain and, you know, fostering peaceful coexistence yes. but when you stand on the pulpit when people and you have a massive influence yeah. and you only highlight problems you know you put it out there highlighting this tension in this in the country without necessarily telling people let's go uh, how do we continue not preferring you know, solutions, preferring solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the newspapers tend to just take the sad yes, part of the please. stories mm -hmm. They always tend to highlight the, neg the yeah. negatives. Yeah. Yes. They don't take the full sermon. Yeah. I've heard, I've watched. Um, Reverend um, Kuka. Reverend Kuka. Um, Pastor Tude Bakari. Yes. And I've watched this full sermon. Yes. And I'm surprised yeah. at the quotes Not that it. paper takes out of it. Yes. It's only the few minutes. He spends on the problem, and they don't highlight the long time he spends on the solution. Mm -hmm. So I think that many people getting their news from papers alone might not be the. So I said so, Kuka, uh, not yes. I didn't listen. No, no, no. To yes, Kuka. but also to be very. Bishop specific, Kuka's yes, statements in the papers this morning. Very specific to Bishop Kuka. He's a well-respected, well-loved yes. bishop, mm -hmm. and he <laughs> preaches <laughs> love. He 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 preaches love. But he's also a man of, of influence. Yes. And the people that come to that, con his congregations are made up of Nigerians who are yes. going through things. Yes. People who are at church have lost families to yes. banditry, to killings, to kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So it is only right that he highlights that. In, you know, um, in 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 conjunction also with message for peace. So mm -hmm. in making your point, you could say that, you know, without necessarily putting the, uh, uh, a name for him, mm -hmm. like he purposely and deliberately and only no, does that. I, I, I so disagree, is, though. Okay. As a clergy, okay. I could pick some of his sermons and then put it back to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. For instance, one of the things he said in that sermon is that um, Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed, the child born to one of the sons of the 98-year-old high priest Eli. He said, the two sons took the ark into unfamiliar territory, the battle. The ark means the presence of God. I agree with that. that that's why we're in the problem today. 
we clergy are taking the presence of God into politics. Mm. We shouldn't be into, dabbling into politics. That's why we're in this mess. When preachers would name certain tribes as and evil they and they kill the Fulanis, that's taking the mm. hawk mm. into wrong territories. Exactly. We should keep the hawk where it belongs. Keep our calling within the church. We've done put into politics. We've, we are swimming there. The sharks are there. They are using us all for our personal gains. I think he may not have known that, but he is one of those that also took the hawk to where we shouldn't go to. We can have our own opinions, but we can't have our own facts. You should go out there, share your own thing, and prefer solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's build one nation. Mm -hmm. Let's have one peace. This has been going on for many years. Mm -hmm. Didn't just start now, and I'm not going to hold brief for this government, by the way. Right. I'm not going to hold brief. There's exactly. insecurity. People are keep being killed. Exactly. It's frightening. Very frightening. I'm not happy. People are exactly. sad. Mm -hmm. Kidnappings are going on. I can't even travel anymore like I used to travel. Right. I'm scared. I don't want people to kidnap me. Yeah. I'll help However, in, in the midst of all that, we should still be thinking solution, mm -hmm. thinking peace, thinking like you said, Morayo, we only have this nation. Mm -hmm. We don't want war and anarchy. Right, right. And if we break into war, anarchy, guess what? Many people will leave the country. Lots of women, children will die, be whipped, and they will be the victims. We should Absolutely. think of that. Right. And not just think, hey, for myself, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so, um, for me, yeah. I, I, I wish the body of Christ can speak with one voice. Mm. You see, if we still have splinters or mm. different messages coming out of the body, body how do we expect Nigeria to speak with one voice? Uh, as it is, we, we have so much influence as men of God. Yeah. The, 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 the churches, people gather in throngs. Millions of people go every Sunday to listen to one man. Mm -hmm. And if only we can decimate the right messages through the churches that would preach, that would, that would foster peace, we would have relatively um, a better society. So with the platform we have right now, you're, not, you're, you're transcending your church, you're transcending your pulpit, yeah. you have your view. Yeah. What would be the core message you believe the, 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 this season should symbolize to people? And how would you want us to respond to one another in this season? Forgiveness, love, peace. These are the three things Jesus came to preach. Listen, I totally share your views and your sentiments. I'm as concerned as most Nigerians on the street that we're not speaking with one voice. It's painful to me as well. And we need to get to the point where we say, what would Jesus do? WWJD. That was what we used to preach back in the school. <laughs> what would Jesus do if Christ were to be alive today and walk in the streets of Nigeria? He would preach peace, he would preach love, and he would preach forgiveness mm -hmm. and tolerance. He would never preach, oh, pull out your sword. Even when they wanted to come and arrest him, my dear Peter pulled out his sword and said, no, come on, keep that there. Keep mm -hmm. that there. Don't mean ship it. You don't have to use it right now. There's a time to use it, but not now. You All know? right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue some conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have with us um, Pastor Kasali telling us about the, the message of Easter. Sorry, before the break, you talked about um, forgiveness, yeah. love, and peace. And, I, and, and that, those are great um, um, uh, things to think about. But in a situation where there's a mistrust of each other, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't have confidence in each other. And there's a distrust of the government. We don't believe that the government has our best interests at heart. How do I have peace with people who I just feel like they hate me? We don't, we don't trust each other. There's that, there's, that, that, there's that inherent dislike for certain tribes over others. How do we begin to heal from what, how, where we are today to get to retrace our steps so that we can all live together in unity? That's where you need moral leaders and patriots. Mm. All great nations in the world have been built by patriots, not politicians. Mm. We don't have patriots in this country. Mm. And that's the truth. There's a difference in politicians and patriots. Moral leaders and just commercial leaders or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Moral leaders. Mandela was a moral leader. Gandhi was a moral leader. These guys think of good and evil. No matter who does it, they tell you this is evil. Mm. If it's my tribesman, if it's my town, my village, they say this is wrong and must not be done. They'll condemn it. And we should condemn what your bad guys do as a bad man. I will condemn Igbo man should condemn what an Igbo man does as an Igbo person. I will say I should condemn what another man does as a that's what moral leadership is all about. Mm. Nigeria, we don't have moral leaders and we don't have patriots, unfortunately for us. Mm. That's why we're in this mess. And I've been praying for the past ten years. God raised 
patriots of this country. Mm. There are people that like this country. They want the thing to just go anyhow because of corruption. They want to make money. Corruption has killed us. It's all about making money. We need patriots and we need moral leaders yes. for us to raise a great nation. Yes. Okay, right. uh, I like to think, uh, when we discuss things, I would like, I like to cast our minds yeah. behind and find what may have caused it. What yeah. is the history? And many times you hear people discuss, oh, this was not how it was in the yeah. 70s, in the yeah. 60s. But we have a history that some people will say had always been regionalized. People had, our country had always been based on the north, south, and east, and you know, the different regions. And that it's really in present day that we're trying to unite what do you think we did wrong then from the beginning and what do we need to do specifically maybe in schools in our churches in our mosques amongst ourselves when we speak to each other what are the things that we need to do say project to mm. help us get you know the, the, the history of this country is very clear to all of us when we started at independence we had regions not religion then our law was a christian the problem that we have now started when we brought religion into the politics. Abiola won an election, Muslim Muslim ticket. It can't happen anymore. Yeah. It can't. All across the north, they voted for him. He was he didn't, he didn't care about religion. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, Jack Conde was a Muslim when our law was a regional leader. He gave all you know, these governors why all Muslims, everybody thought of religion. I grew up in a Muslim home. I was a Muslim. My dad, my mom allowed me when I became Christian, converted. As I have 16 children. Mm. We still have family meetings, Muslim Christians, we come together, we eat together. Mm. Today, it's almost like any meeting. One of my sisters almost hates me now because she's a very strong, strong Muslim. See, I don't want you to go at me. I hate you. And I said, okay, you too. I'll fight you. I'm a Christian. Why? Same father. Mm. Who did this to us? Who did this to us? Religious leaders have killed this country. I'm one of them. Mm. We've killed and ruined this country. We have to be truthful to ourselves. Mm. But when we had religion, region was simply for economic purposes. So you people develop economy in South uh, we Southern region, Northern region. We put some in the center to run our defense. Then things were fantastic until that city school. Things were going on well. It was better. Even the 79 elections, when Shagari came in, it was more of North. You will notice that religion played a very a little role. I'm telling you, now religion is at the front burner. Right. Even everything. everything. And it's bad. And we need to start looking at that eyeball to eyeball and say, this is wrong. Right. So I would like to take this tweet before I base my question. So yeah. um, Agba first son is saying, my people and properties worth millions have been massacred, destroyed by militias every day at Ukute, Benue State, Nigeria by their neighboring community, Bonta, in Benue State, Nigeria, and the crisis has loomed for over eight months. We hear people calling for secession, and I'm always wondering, if we secede and we have regions, and then we call them uh, Odudua Nation, we call it Arewa and all of that, would we further divide? Because this is a border community within one state, and the, the division is clear. They are at war, and even the governor of the state seems un unable to think of solutions. The, the solutions just, you know, just fly off their head. They leave it as an ethnic crisis, and it continues to divide. Are we in secession the way forward? I don't, I don't, for agree. Us? I don't agree. The greatest nations in the world today, U.S. and, and, and China, find out who are the people that made us. All kinds of people went to the U.S. China had multiple tribes, and they came together under the Qing dynasty. Look at USSR that broke away to 15, 16 countries. Where is Latvia? Where, there are many countries we can't even mention. We can't even mention them. Economically, they're not doing well when they broke away from USSR. They strengthen numbers. And they just broke away Ukraine, that there, Czech, all kinds. I don't even remember that 15, 16 countries broke away from. But Russia is still strong. Russia is still strong. I don't agree with that. I think those that do that are the political elites for their own pockets. Yeah. They want to have money. That's all. They, they, listen, the country as it is now mm -hmm. are governed by governors. How many of us are demanding accountability for our governors? There are billions of naira every month. Mm. Some just take it like that and put it in their own pockets. Yeah. I want to secede. Ah, uh, let's ask ourselves. But what those of questions. regional autonomy? So people are saying Fiscal. I don't want to secede. Yes. People Fiscal. are saying regional strength. Do you I, I agree? agree? I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. I with think we should do regional autonomy. We should decentralize the police. We should have um, fiscal economy. People know no autonomy. People now understand that. So whatever you generate here, you keep a larger percentage of it. You put some to the central. 
to keep the defense of the nation, right. to protect the unity of right. the people, and to ensure that we all have safety and of yeah. lives and properties. Yeah. However, then, then most likely then, we have some transparency, some accountability at the regional level, then we can use those funds to so develop the So a Benue state governor who, is, who seems to be yes. bereft of ideas, yes. once he's within that yes. region, yes. they can actually have better solutions because Absolutely. now he has more power Absolutely. to, 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 to solve the problem. If you foster competition, healthy yes. competition, yes. but you will see that that region is growing with rails, with roads, with schools. Has is not. So the people here will vote their leaders out to get somebody in that can develop yeah. their region just like that other region is developing. Fantastic. That will be helpful. Now, what Go ahead. The current mindset of Nigerians where politicians are accused. I think it worked. Okay, what I mean is that uh, many people have, you know, I had this conversation over the weekend with a young man and he was saying that many of the policies that we're bringing into Nigeria is it will fall flat on his face because we have a mindset. People believe you get into office and you must be corrupt. So if you even regionalize whatever solutions there are, you will regionalize the corruption. So what do we need to do at that level concerning mindset? What are we teaching our children? Or what have we been taught that we should not teach our children so when it's their turn, they don't make the mistakes that we're making now? Corruption is key. You're very correct, I mean, you're very right. Um, even as it is right now, we have federal units, federation units, federation units 36, and nobody's demanding um, some things from the governors who are very corrupt, by the way, very corrupt, and they steal all the money, and, and I say that without any apologies and with a sense of honesty, and, and we keep quiet. We go to the federal and say, oh, this boy that's creating crisis somewhere in Udo, somewhere everywhere. I think corruption we must deal with. To deal with corruption, moral leaders. The, law, the houses of assemblies, the, you know, the watered down oversight functions of these lawmakers, that, you know, any corrupt governor can be impeached, but we've not seen that in recent history in Nigeria. Yeah, so, but bring me back to the power of religion and we know that yeah. sadly religion has been used to divide us Absolutely. but religion every religion preaches peace mm -hmm. every religion preaches yes. um, unity mm -hmm. every religion preaches sacrifice if you talk to the Muslim they'll tell you we're supposed to sacrifice you're supposed to give sadaqah you're supposed to give sacrificially helping your community the Christians would also say sacrificial giving so where where is the lacuna why are we all religious and then they are able to effectively use religious to divide us, but the religion cannot build us. Mm -hmm. How can we go back to using religion to do what it's meant to do, which yeah. is pro lift us, provide unity, and build us, promote the peace? I'm sorry I may not be able to give some answers to that one, <laughs> because we are the problem. I've always said that, that religious I've said it, I've tweeted it I've, for the past five, eight years, religious leaders are the problem in this country. Mm -hmm. We are the problem. It's our culture. Is our culture inflating? Um, in well, I, I guess you're right. I preach a sermon called KBSC. Mm. KBSC means KBOC. Nobody can question you. Mm. And I said, somehow we divide our religious leaders to the point where we can't question them. Mm. We don't want to question one. They say, touch mm. not my anointed. So whatever the person does and says is right. Mm. So I think you're right. Our culture has also played some role for us to just pay obeisance to those ahead of us, be it politicians or be it religious leaders. We don't want to question them. And only God should not be questioned, not men of God. Mm. Hmm. You know, I, I wanted to ask something controversial. I'm trying to rephrase it in a way that is not too... Because sometimes I feel like democracy is not working here. I feel like, do we really need democracy? I mean, I, I, I recently at the mm. Ashura Jews of Colloquium, there was a professor from Harvard who was saying that, that based on the data, they are his weeds rating that democracy is still the way because other African countries have actually been able to use democracy to stabilize their country in, in different ways. And I'm thinking... Do we, are we too big a nation such that we need to look back and say, okay, maybe we should find ways to empower the, the, the monarchs. Maybe we should find a way to, no, I'm, I don't want to go back to the restructuring issue, but maybe is democracy really is a solution? Can we really all say government by the people for the people? Or should we say, you know, maybe we need some kind of autocracy? With the, maybe, maybe because we, we, many people sub, sub, subject themselves to the leadership of the pastors, leadership of the imams, leadership of the monarchs. Maybe in this country, what we need is that monarchy type of system where we have this rule. I don't know, I'm just thinking out of it because sometimes it's, it's sometimes as if we are bereft of ideas or the, the, the democracy is not really functioning the I way it should. I think democracy is still the way forward. We'll, we'll just have to tweak it a little bit. There's autocratic democracy. There's parliamentary democracy, there's presidential. We have tweaked us too much along presidential, the American style, and it's not working for us. Because it depends on the people. Look at, we keep speaking about Rwanda. Rwanda is a beacon. 
It's autocratic democracy. It's been up over 20 years. We couldn't even give a, a person a full term. We, we ran. Yeah. You can't run it in for four years. The first year you're getting into power. You want to get money to all the money you spent to get to the office to recoup. Second year, let me not start thinking of doing roads. Third year, they tell you, ah, next year's election. So you start stealing again. Fourth year, you go into election. So how can you develop a nation in four years? Before you know it, second term is in. From the first year of your second term, you're thinking, for who? Let I me mean, look at my successor. That will cover my mess. Yes. Second year, you're saying, look, let me change my cabinet. Third year, I want to go to the Senate. Fourth year, you are just. So there's no way in eight years ending. I want to go to the Senate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I'll go to the Senate. So fourth year, you're out, second term. Now I say, what, what do I do after that? Let me get an ambassadorial post. Look at our favorite governor in Kogi State. Just get the second term. Only thinking 2023. 20, I can you imagine? Becoming the president. Yes, so it tells yeah. you a lot about the kind of democracy we should do. We should mm. tweak ours a bit. What we're practicing now is not working. Not working. It's extremely expensive. Mm. National Assembly is the most expensive it's assembly expensive. in the world. Mm. It's not working. Not sure. And we should look at it honestly. I say, you know what? Let's go a bit autocratic. Let's give the person their six years, two times, but they will not allow. So, for where? We, we need what to go region? around. Yeah, yeah. Mm. go around. Rotational democracy. But I think we should consider working. Germany. It's not working. Because you see, uh, um, yeah. Angela Merkel is living and she's been there for many years. Oh, yes. And it's not autocratic. <laughs> it's just a system that allows you to stay longer term. Uh, but, but honestly, I, I always try to find a way to bring it back into. Um, Easter is the visit. Easter is why we are here. We are all dressed up. We are, all, we, are, we are trying to be happy. Before you switch, you happiness. Yeah, may I say? Yeah, I have to have something to yeah, Because we, have, we, like, we like this kind of conversation in Nigeria. Let's not continue to revel in our. Um, Hassan, are you there? You've been hoping for a while. Yes, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, Hassan. Good morning. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter. Okay. Hello, talk about Limo Show. Not, oh, yes. not regular, not regular. Go ahead, go ahead. We can hear you. You are, you are all looking gorgeous and beautiful. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Pastor, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Happy Easter, sir. Happy Easter to you as well. Thank, thank you for the word of wisdom and the knowledge you have been sharing to us this morning. May the Lord continue to embrace you with more wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yeah, okay, just yes. to So, okay, I just <laughs> would like to go back to what our leaders, our religious leaders, yes. should say and how they should say it. Yeah. So, in many communities, the government that the people see are their religious leaders. Yeah. And um, when we started these conversations, you said something about um, religious leaders taking themselves out of politics. Yeah. And... Uh, whether we like it or not, religious leaders are part of the country, part of the politics, part of what is happening. Yeah. How does a religious leader lead his people? Yeah. Being the, the, the face of leadership and politics within his community, what does he say? How does he say it to his people to make them aware, to teach them about religion and as well about what their rights are, what they should seek for politically without being called out and uh, accused of causing problems. If you get what I mean. Well, I, I get what you mean. Mm. I, I think we should be truthful that, because again, religion is about being truthful and justice. What is more about justice? You can't have tr tr I mean, truth without justice. But we should not be involved in partisan politics. Mm. We should not be involved in governance, as it were. I swear the key leaders have teaming followers. What we have done right now is we've been actively involved, mm. actively, please know that word, involved in partisan politics, mm. meaning I'm PDP, I'm APC. Okay. And that's, what, and that's, that's dangerous. Yeah. That's dangerous. That's not right. You know, and we get to the point that we don't know where to draw the line anymore. So no matter what this guy does, because I'm in the party with him, I, I benefited from whatever she's done, I would just turn the blind high. Mm. That's I feel during the previous regime, so many things were happening. They turned the blind high. Mm. They didn't speak. How come all of a sudden they have a voice now? Because I don't like that particular person. I don't like his party. Yeah. So I now begin to speak and use the pulpit mm. to say things. So I, I honestly believe that we're using the pulpit wrongly as the campaign podium, which mm. is wrong to campaign mm. for a particular party and to push a particular agenda. Mm. I think we should just stay, read the Bible, mm. preach the Bible, and do what the Bible says you should do. Stay with Save you. souls. That's all. I'd like all. to stay with you on that point, but I have to take this call. Uh, yeah. Good morning. John, are you there? John. Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Morning. Uh, good morning. Happy start to everyone on Thank the studio. You, sir. Uh, my, name, my name is John. I'm calling from UK. Yeah. Uh, quick one. In answer to your previous conversation about the security, 
One thing I discovered that we do a lot in this land, I mean, in Nigeria, is that we talk a lot without action. And I'm looking forward into a day where our leaders will begin to put action and talk less. You know, because the issue of security, they've been talking about it for, you know, 10 years without any good result coming out. You know, different meetings and all those things like that. And also, to our pastor, in, uh, the reverend in the studio, I'm looking forward to um, a day where our religious leader will begin to 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 come, I mean, to to put um, what's it called? I mean, kind of uh, um, uh, what other put it? You know, uh, put effort into the community. You know, kind of uh, you know, do more to the community because there's no there's no there's no reason where we are so many churches in Nigeria and our community is so bad. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, John, from the UK. I was going to come to talk about because I know you want to take us into the Easter mode. But before we run there, I want you to talk. I had an interview with somebody recently who told me when I was questioning about Khan. And he said, Mariah, Khan is not born again. Khan is, decision is not a born again institution. That their own is to advocate for the rights of Christians across the country. Do you think Khan has been somewhat irresponsible? I, don't, I, I know you I don't want to categorically say that, but in their or utterances, or controversial, mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. utterances. Mm -hmm. have, they, have they been within their scope? Or they, are they one of those who have veered off into politics? I mean, mm. should we bring them, should we bring it back home? It's because what is their role exactly in all this? You see, um, I, I would answer that with a bit of what you had asked earlier. The church and CAN are two different things. CAN is an organization of all Christians and churches, churches, I beg your pardon, together and speak for the, to defend the Christian faith in the land, to observe laws that will be anti-Christian in nature and attack it. I think Karen, under this um, leadership, has done fairly well. Okay. My opinion, and I'll be honest with you, I think I've spoken to Reverend Shoko, he listens. He would like to hear from your hand before you make a view on the subject matter. A few times, they, they may have been misadvised, you know, you know, because of the social media information out there. Mm. So they, they won't go ahead and to find out what's really going on. Mm. But I think they've done fairly well. I'm going to be honest with you. Khan has done fairly well with respect to their work. However, is the religious leaders that's a problem? Because again, especially my own, my own constituency, the Pentecostals, because we have, we, we are gods on our own. We do not have authority. We don't submit to authority. Yeah, yeah. We use the pulpit anyhow, mm. and we we. The church should say something if the government is trying to do homosexual agenda. That's against what the Bible says. So you should go on the pulpit and you speak against that. If the Bible government is trying to do something that you know is against scriptures, you can go and do that. But to start looking at policies of government and you attack every time or you try to condemn and criticize one, it's a bit partisan for me. And I think okay. it's not what God has called us all to do. That's yeah, my let's take a few tweets for your runner. Dark horses. Almost all our, uh, our so-called clergy, traditional leaders and politicians are blinded by ethno-religious bigotry, while our youth are enveloped in drug addiction, mm. prostitution, and criminal gangsterism, only to, only to raise to become heartless leaders themselves. Billy Kismafe says, all leaders, religious or political, must practice the teachings of what they identify with. Being a religious leader is just a status if you do not have the love of God to do right by the people. Professor Enakena says, the national security architecture must now be primed in a way to allow state access to recruit and manage their local security. The egregious political sponsorship of criminality must be abhorred, and those involved must be prosecuted openly as a deterrent. Right. So I love those three tweets. Andrew Siddham says that Christian and Islam in Nigeria preaches peace, sacrifice, and love. Even we have 1,000 churches slash, slash mosques per square meter, per square mile, yet society is not working in Nigeria. Uh, Nathan says, nothing wrong with democracy itself. Problem is the perversion by operators. Fundamental to any democracy are the principles of federalism, equity, fairness, and justice. Right. This is what our operators pervert, making us question the validity of democracy. 
you know, just before we started the show, we were making fun. Yeah. Because of social media, it seems like Easter is about Easter bunny eggs, <laughs> chocolate eggs, and not Christ anymore. Like, we're losing perspective of what Easter is. And, you know, sometimes, like now for us, it will seem funny because many of us know what it's about. But over time, okay. our children are looking at it and they are wondering, Where the Easter, where's the Easter bunny? Where's the egg? Like, could you say something to remind us? you know, that what, what Easter definitely is about, and the Easter bunny, and that's just um, Hollywood and not reality. <laughs> I guess, I guess um, we all know, as I speak right now, we're running a social media campaign at church. Hundreds of people are there pushing, I love the cross. Hashtag, ah. I love the cross. So you're going to train a couple of hours from now. It's about the cross. The cross actually defines our faith. Um, I mean, thank God for Christmas, but thank God the more for Easter. Without Easter, there'll be no Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not because of Christmas or miracles. It's because he died on that cross for the sins of humanity. And that's why many Christians use the emblem of the cross as the logo, as it were. Regardless of what church, be it Seller, be it Pentecostal, be it Anglican, be it Catholic, there's something we all have in our churches, the cross. And that speaks about our unite, unifying emblem and logo. The cross. I think we should replace all these bunnies with the cross. That would be my message. Yes. We're going to be taking a few calls now from the yeah. YouTube. There's a, a tweet said something about we have churches. I mean, I know my own personal church, RCCG, <laughs> was part of our in the early days. Our one of, one of our vision was to have a church every five minutes yeah. from each other. So that was mm. the vision then. But now churches are now every two minutes, and they are everywhere. And still, we still have the fact that our society is not yet uh, morally Amazing. upright. So. Do you think the vision of consistently building buildings, having that every five, five minutes, is still the way to go? Or should, there, should we change strategy on how we get people? I'll, I'll let you answer that question after this call from the US. Good morning, are you there? Good morning. Thanks for calling, you're live. Go ahead, please. Um, uh, I don't want to contribute to that. I want to say, Nima, sorry for what happened to her. I don't want to do it. She had an encounter with these uh, people, so I want to. Yeah, uh, I want to say her sorry. Okay. Nima, he has heard sorry. What, what <laughs> uh, I want to say her sorry for what happened to Adam. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Nima, welcome. Thank you, sir. How are you? Uh, <laughs> thank you. I don't want to contribute to this. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Joshua. We appreciate it. Are you the sister? Are you the sister? Are you the sister? Are I didn't get that last part. All right. So, I mean, what do you think? To be honest with you, Moraio, I am to be honest. I like to be honest. We have failed. It's like you have in many schools, and illiteracy level is still high. Mm. Mm. Because the purpose of school mm. is failed. to drop illiteracy level. I have in hospitals everywhere, and people are still dying of malaria. The, the hospitals are not working. Mm. We have churches, and the morality is on the rise, mm. corruption on the rise, crime. banditry crime. I mean, clubs, sin, iniquity. What we're meant to treat and attack is still on the rise. Sure. That means we have failed. Maybe, maybe it's not the fault or the problem is not planting churches, but not raising pastors. Because if you have too many hospitals and quack doctors, mm. you keep killing people. Yeah. Too many schools and ill-trained teachers, mm. they won't be able to spell. You get the point now. Mm. So maybe the church idea of moving everywhere isn't that bad, but we refuse to train those that will operate those churches, mm. pastors. They are not theologically sound. We have all kind of criminals behind the pulpit. We just have everything being done anyhow. And so we now have, that's why the salt and the light thing is not working. Mm. Morals are still very low. It's going down faster. You keep wondering. And the people that do all that go to church. Mm -hmm. So there's something wrong with what we mm -hmm. preach in church. Mm -hmm. exactly. What we preach should be morals, love, justice, tolerance. That means what we're preaching peace. could be. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we're preaching is wrong. Because, and that's why I think we are failed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in planting churches. There's something wrong in not building people. How do we retrace our steps, sir? How do we begin church to leaders. retrace? Church we have to, first, we have to acknowledge that we're wrong. Okay. Just like the thief on the cross. One said, I'm wrong. I'm here justifiably. And Christ said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. The other said, well, I keep doing the blame game. It's your fault. It's government's fault. It's this. Well, that person went away. So we need to first say to ourselves, you know what, guys? We're wrong. We have, we have not gotten to that point. Okay. As, as, I did, as I did now, we're still debating and arguing it. Mm. We need to agree first. Call ourselves in a communicant meeting and say, hey, guys, shut it down. We're wrong. We made a mistake. Then what we will now do? From there, we now say, let's start training pastors. That's all. Train pastors and you have good members. 
ill trained pastors who have terrible members, stripping their members, Office stealing power. their money, doing all kinds of ah. things, teaching wrong doctrines. Mm. We need to place premium on training men of God, right. pastors that will man those churches, not businessmen. They brought so many secular ideas into running churches. There's two different things. Church is not a business. Stop all this making mm -hmm. church about money, money, money. It's not about business. It's about helping people to become better so, in so, life. So there's this thing I have to talk about. Yeah. Our young ones, yes. our youth, there are these two ills, drugs and scamming. Mm -hmm. So I was in church one day yeah. and my church I think like 80% of the congregation is young people. Yeah. And I'm wondering, okay, I'm sure yeah. of these 80 people, they have to be involved in one way with the drugs, with the scamming, but they're in church and they fill the pews and they're dancing and they're singing and they're raising hands to God. What are we not telling them? What are we well, saying wrong? Saying what are we, well, well, are we not saying? Because I remember that part, the reason why I even brought it, I remember the day Pastor, the pastor said something about if you know you are into this, I'm saying it now. So the Holy Spirit is going ahead of you. You better stop it because. But I'm wondering, how do you have so many young people in churches these days, and yet we have that many doing these things that we're doing? Oh. It's the message we preach. We preach money. We preach prosperity. We preach tithing, and we ignore where the tithe money and prosperity is coming from. We ignore the source. We ignore the resource. Materialism. We like the resource, and we ignore the source. And the salt matters more than the resource. We just want all kinds. So because we have done, not done that right, what we're now doing, and here's that message, is about love, <coughs> forgiveness, redemption, and the things Christ said on the cross. Seven messages. We must go back today. You build me in paradise. Relationship. John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. Now there was two people that are not related okay. can have a spiritual relationship and mm, they can bond fantastic. together. I can call you my sister. You can call me your brother. Mm. That's what Christ came to preach and teach. We have to run. So tell me once more what, <coughs> you do, what your church is. I think you said hashtag love. I love Okay, Christ. we're doing a social media campaign. Hashtag social I media. love the cross. I love the cross. Just want to push those quiet and we have some different banner and, and yeah. banner and saying I love the cross. Okay. That's all. Okay. We want to identify with the cross today. Oh, let people know about the cross and let us push the cross message out there. Not the church message. The cross oh, message. Oh, fantastic. I think we can wrap up on that. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. It's always a pleasure having you. Yes, for being very objective, being true. And that's what we need people to do at this point, to speak truth to power and let us let, let, let Nigerians understand the real issues. And let's not listen to the politicians. We need patriots. Yes. If I've not gotten anything from this interview, it's the fact that we have politicians leading. We need patriots and leaders to lead this country. Yeah. They, can, they can look at it irrespective of your of religion, yeah. culture, and what else. And all, yeah. and all Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you so much. All right, that's all we can take on the show. Have a fabulous Easter. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.